So you just finished shooting your documentary. You've organized all your footage. You've watched it through front and back. You pulled out the best bits, cataloged it, and now you're faced with a blank timeline. Where the hell do you go from here? It's the same question I've been asking myself for the past seven years of editing documentaries every time I start a new project. Well, today I wanna to break down the exact step-by-step -step process that I use to get past that dreaded blank timeline, find the story in the terabyte of raw footage on my hard drive and transform that into a compelling documentary. But first, I just want to start with a metaphor to explain why we get stuck in this phase of editing. Editing documentaries is kind of like solving one of those 2D maze puzzles. That squiggly line that weaves its way through the walls of the maze, that's our story arc. Those twists and turns, those dead ends and back steps, those are all the interesting moments in our story that we use to pull our audience along. The problem is, when you look at a maze like this, the story seems straightforward. It's easy to solve this maze. But when you're starting your documentary, your maze looks like this. It's completely pitch black. You can't even see where to enter the maze, let alone your full story arc. So how do we get past this point? To help me explain this, I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of how I found the story for my 40 minute documentary, Mountain Turks. So similar to you, when I was first starting off with Mountain Turks, I had five terabytes of footage and no idea where to begin. So the very first step when we're trying to find the story of our documentary is going through all of our interviews or any relevant dialogue that we captured and transcribing it to text. The benefit of transcribing all of our audio to text is that reading is way more efficient than listening to interviews. We also get the benefits of being able to highlight text, comment on text, and on top of that, we have the perk of being able to search through text as we come up with ideas. There are many, many ways to transcribe audio into text these days. The service that I've used over time that I really enjoy is Rev. And as you can see here, these are all of the transcriptions that I processed for my documentary Mountain Turks. I think I was, I ended up working with 20 different interviews to shape this story. If I go into any one of these, you can see you've got the text and it comes up with the video on the side here, which is really handy for if you are reading through and you just wanna see how someone said a line, it's really nice to be able to refer to the video to see if that line's actually going to work for your specific idea. Once we've got all of our interviews transcribed in whatever way you want, we can move on to step number two, where we're actually going to start lighting up different parts of our maze. To do that, we're gonna start going through our transcripts and we're gonna start highlighting anything that stands out to us. It doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter if it's connected to anything else, if it's something that just means anything to you or you think you could potentially use in your story, you want to highlight it. As you can see, I've done that in this interview here. There's various highlights throughout the interview. And this is a nice way to comb through, understand what you actually shot, what you actually have, and also trim it down so that rather than working with huge amounts of text, you've at least narrowed it down to useful bits. Once you're done highlighting each interview, you can download only the highlighted sections into a PDF. So we're basically getting quite literally a highlight reel of all of our interviews. Now we're ready to move on to step number three. So at this point, our maze kind of looks like this. We've got a bunch of dim little lights that are kind of scattered throughout the maze and they're not really all that helpful. We can't really see a path yet. So the next step is to try and illuminate even bigger swaths of this maze so that we can actually see where we're going. We can start to see the beginnings of different pathways through this maze. And the way we do this is by finding different themes or ideas that are recurring throughout our various interviews. As you come through your interview highlights, different ideas or concepts are gonna start jumping out at you. You're gonna notice different characters mentioning the same things multiple times, 
And what we want to do is start jotting down all of these different ideas and basically making bins for where we can store any quotes related to these ideas. The way I did this for Mountain Turks is in an app I like to use called Milanote. It's basically just a really flexible storyboarding or creative app. Here on the left, I have a color legend. And what that basically tells me is based on the color of the quote, I know that that quote came from a specific interview. So if I ever need to backtrack and find that in the actual video file, I know exactly what interview to look for. And over here in this interview themes, this is the important part. This is what I'm talking about with grouping together different ideas. So as I read through all of the interviews, which you can see there's a lot here, each time I would read through a different theme or idea would jump out at me. So Eric, the main character, there's a lot of quotes about his personal life. There's a story that relates to his parents being Antarctic explorers and how that related to Eric's childhood. There's the story of when Eric was the first one to traverse the Southern Alps of New Zealand. Don't know if that's going to be useful, but that's in there as well. They went through COVID together, him and his family. There was quotes about that. There's quotes about the mountain community from all of the different members that are a part of the club Eric started. So you can see these are all just different ideas. And if I click on one of these, you'll see I've collected every single quote from my highlights that relates to that specific theme or idea. So within this board, I have all of the quotes that relate to Eric being an inventor or an inventive person, or just honestly like his quirky side of his personality. So when you look through these, you're not seeing a story yet. There's nothing even close to a story. It's just a bunch of various ideas, different, disconnected ideas that may or may not be useful in the end. But what each one of these ideas or themes is doing is it's lighting up a different part of my maze. Now that could be the top corner that's useless because it's just full of dead ends, or that could be right in the center of the maze, or maybe if I'm lucky, it actually lights up the entrance and now all of a sudden I have a way to get into my story. I understand how to start my film. Whatever it is, you're just trying to light up different sections so that we can understand as much about our film and our story as we possibly can. So there's no pressure in this phase to even connect anything. You're still just digging, you're exploring, you don't know what your story is gonna be, so we don't wanna impose anything on it just yet. So you wanna keep going through your interviews Honestly, as much as you can do while staying sane, because the more you go through, the more ideas you come up with this phase, the more you're gonna light up your maze. And hopefully as you progress through this process, the easier it will be to find your story later. Okay, so the next step in the process is to start trying to connect some of these different portions of the maze. The easiest way that I've found to start connecting some of these different themes and ideas is to now decide on a story arc template. And I know this sounds formulaic and this is a little controversial, but trust me, having a little bit of a structure to start forming your story around is going to help you start connecting these dots between these different patches of light. It's going to help you start finding a solution, whether or not it's the final structure you end up with. So if you're editing a short documentary, I'd recommend probably the three act structure. If you're sort of in the middle length, I would recommend probably Dan Harmon's story circle. And then if you're working on a longer piece, like I was with Mountain Turks, I used the Save the Cat story structure. Now, once we've chosen a story structure, in my case for Mountain Turks, it was Save the Cat, we're gonna wanna start forming our paper edit. A paper edit is a storyboard for our edit. In our case, we wanna lay out all of the story beats and see if we can find different scenes that we could attach to different story beats. Okay, so here's the paper edit for Mountain Turks. I laid it out with the Save the Cat story structure, like I just mentioned. So you can see there's 14 different story beats in here, which are 14 different scenes. 
I also laid it out with Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 on the left here, just to make it a bit easier for me. But all of this Save the Cat structure is available widely online, so I suggest going and checking it out if you plan on using this story structure in your film. Now, the reason why we want to start thinking about a story structure at this point is because the story structures will essentially act like a template solution for our maze. So if we go back to the maze analogy, it's kind of like putting a preformed solution on top of your maze that suggests like, hey, this might be the solution to the maze. We don't know for sure, we haven't connected all the bits, but you know, this part that's dark down here, it probably goes a little bit something like this. So it's just a suggestion for how we might find the solution to our maze puzzle. So when you start your paper edit, it might actually look a little something like this. You have all your story beats laid out and you have different scenes that apply to some, but not all of the story beats. You know, you might have a good idea of how you're gonna introduce your character and all of the quotes from that grouping of quotes, that spotlight, that might apply to that story beat. Or you might have, you know, a good idea of what your midpoint is, whether it's a low point or a high point in your main character's life. So you have a grouping of quotes that relates to that story beat that could be a scene. But you'll see that there's some of these scenes that are connected because they're next to each other. And then there's other scenes that have story beats in between them. So these are dark spots on our maze between two bright patches where we don't know the solution to that yet. We don't know how to connect these two scenes, these two ideas. So this is where having a template like this is really useful because we start to see the holes in our story and we can start going through our interviews with a different perspective. If we know that we need to find the dark night of the soul, the, the deepest, darkest moment that our protagonist, our main character experiences, that's a different lens to comb through all of our interview quotes with than, you know, our introduction to the main character. Those are two completely different mindsets. So now we're honing in. We're not only lighting up more parts of the maze, but we're trying to light up very specific parts of the maze to then extend what we know about our maze and figure out more of our solution. As you go through your interviews over and over and over again, and you refer back to your story structure and your paper edit, you'll start to fill up each one of these story beats. Now it's not going to be a linear process. It's not like the first time you try this, you know, the story beat that you had for the midpoint, it's gonna stay that story beat. You might have to flip things around, change the order of things. I went through four different full versions of a paper edit for Mountain Turks before I ever even really started editing. But this is the best part about making a documentary. This is the part where you're discovering in real time what your film that you've worked so hard on up until this point is actually going to be about. This is where you get to tweak all of the emotions. This is where you get to make the lows super low and the highs super high. This is where you just get to feed your curiosity and just have fun with it and try and mess around and come up with different crazy ideas and ways to tell this story. It's a messy process, but once you get the hang of it, once you're fully into your interviews and you've wrapped your head around it, it starts to become fun. So just keep at it, keep iterating on it, keep going through your interviews, keep trying, and eventually you'll light up just enough of the maze that you can finally see your solution from the entrance of the maze all the way to the exit. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something from this video today. And if you like nerding out about the art of editing documentaries, check out this video here where I actually break down my exact workflow for organizing massive documentary projects so you don't get lost in piles and piles of footage. That's it for me today, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.